When the Maple Leafs drafted Austin Matthews, they had one thing in mind, and that was to win the Stanley Cup. And now six years later, we're still asking the question, what can they do to get past the first round? It's safe to say Toronto had a great season last year. They had a franchise record 115 points in the regular season. They ran into the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round of the playoffs, but unfortunately lost again in a game seven where they were so close to getting over the hump. But now with a lot of new players, Zach Aston Reese, Nicholas Abe Kubel, Kyle Yarn Croak, and Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov, they look to rewrite that narrative that they will get past the first round, that they will get over the hump and possibly go further. And this is going to be a big season for both Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keith because if they don't get results this time around, they could be out of jobs by this season's end. But there's a lot of excitement around this season and there should be, but looking at last season, there are a lot of things that they did well, which they could bring into this year. Again, they had the fourth most points in the NHL with 115, a franchise record. Their power play was the best in the entire NHL, sitting at 27.3%. They had a great face-off winning percentage throughout even strength, neutral zone, and defensive zone face-offs. They were first in every category, as you can see, and they had the second most goals at five on five, with 210, while having one of the worst save percentages in the entire league at 891 throughout the entire season. Now, how did they do all this? Well, looking at the face-offs first, a lot of the defensive zone face-offs were taken by Jason Spezza, and he is not with the team anymore as a player. So they're gonna be looking for other players to come in and take those face-offs. Austin Matthews and John Tavares are obviously gonna be key ones, but I wonder if Alexander Kerfoot and David Camp get some face-offs in the defensive zone as well. Obviously the goals, a lot of them came from Austin Matthews last year. And one of the biggest question marks this year is whether or not he can win the Rocket again for the second straight season and whether or not he can hit 60 goals for the second straight season. That's a big question mark and I'm excited to see what happens surrounding that. A lot of you might be thinking the regular season isn't important, but it's actually very important in terms of the fabric that makes this Maple Leafs team. There's a lot of new players that need to be acclimated, that need to figure out how to play with each other, and that's what the regular season is for. Obviously, there's going to be a few storylines like Austin Matthews, John Tavares, how he can play, Matt Murray and Elias Samsonov, and how they can be as goaltenders in the city of Toronto. Those are all big question marks, but as the season goes on, as the regular season moves forward, we're gonna find out all of those things and we're gonna find out who does good, who does bad, and what the Maple Leafs might need to do once the trade deadline hits and then once the postseason hits. I thought I'd take a look with you over the advanced stats that the Leafs had brought to you by Natural Stat Trek at five on five last year. They were the sixth best at Corsi four, 10th best at goals four percentage, Third best at expected goals for, which is very good to see. Second best at high danger chances for percentage and 16th in high danger goals for percentage. Now, what does this tell you? Well, the first thing is that they're an offensively sound team, but they're also a defensively sound team. They're good in both ends of the ice. They had probably what was possibly one of the best defensive seasons that they had in a long time last year. And in the playoffs too, they were pretty good at that. Again, with an 891 save percentage in the regular season. So if they can continue to have that good defensive year along with that good offensive year, there's a lot of great things coming in the regular season. Obviously the playoffs are a different story, but if they could play the same way and provide a little bit of physicality, there's no saying that they couldn't get past the first round and move on to the second and third and potentially the Stanley Cup finals. Taking a look at the advanced stats for each line though. Bunting Matthews Marner played a total of 554 minutes at five on five last year, had a very overall good offensive and defensive season. Obviously Matthews is very good in the defensive zone. Mitch Marner is good in the defensive zone. Michael Bunting is decent too. So they're bound to have success. The second line of John Tavares and William Nylander had 636 minutes of time on ice at five on five didn't have the most successful season, but they also didn't have the worst season. One of the biggest question marks surrounding these two guys is whether or not they can play good and whether or not Dennis Malgin, who is now the right wing on this second line, 
can fit with them, if Nylander and Tavares can find their chemistry that they had a few seasons ago, this line is in very good hands, but if they cannot, there's gonna be more question marks going deeper and deeper into the season. As we get deeper into the lineup though, things get more interesting. Kerfoot and Engvall will be two thirds of that third line with Cali Yarncroke there as well. They played 97 minutes of five on five last year without Yarncroke. They didn't have the best offensive season, but they're very defensively sound. And that's one of the things that it's going to be interesting to see is if they can play defensively very well, and if they can do that, whether or not they can play offensively very well will be the question as well. The fourth line is brand new. Aston Reese, David Camp, and Abe Cabell. Similar to the third line, they're very defensively sound and can play good there. The, just the big question mark will be if they could produce offensively and be depth scoring, which the Maple Leafs didn't have much of when they faced Tampa Bay in the first round last year. The three biggest question marks with the forward group is one, whether or not Tavares is going to be good at center throughout the whole year. The second question mark is Dennis Malgan and whether or not he can perform in a top six role. And finally, again, the depth scoring. If they can have depth scoring, there won't be any question marks by the trade deadline. But that if they struggle with depth scoring, the Leafs might want to add once that time rolls around. The defense, though, is really interesting as well because a lot of it has stayed the same other than the fact that Lilligren is not in the lineup with an injury, so Sandine will play with Mark Giordano. We didn't see that last year. Obviously, with Morgan Riley and TJ Brody, there aren't really much question marks there in terms of how good they can be, how bad they are. We all know that they are a very good pairing together, so there isn't really a many question marks surrounding that. The biggest question mark probably is Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall. They were good two seasons ago in the Canadian COVID bubble. Can they be that again? We don't really know. There's a lot of question marks there, especially with Muzzin's health and whether or not he can play good Justin Hall and whether or not he can work beside Jake Muzzin at this point. If they can, it's going to be great. If they can't, there's going to be a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of question marks surrounding that pairing. Obviously, they didn't have the best season last year, but they also didn't have the worst. They had some pretty decent numbers overall. The eye test probably would have told you a different story. But if they can keep these numbers up consistently, I wouldn't have a problem with that pairing sticking around for a while. But the third pairing as it stands right now is Giordano and Rasmus Sandin. They didn't play together like I just said, and it'll be interesting to see what happens there and what they can do and how Sandin performs in a right defenseman role and how Giordano plays at the age that he is. But the two biggest question marks here are Muzzin's health and how he'll play alongside Justin Hall, how that pairing will do, and what happens once Timothy Lilligren is ready to return because his 1.4 million cap hit is on LTIR right now. But once he comes off and is ready to play, there's going to be some question marks as to who comes out of this Maple Leafs roster because they're gonna to need to clear 1.4 mil in cap space. Is it a forward that gets traded? Is it a defenseman that gets traded? We'll have to wait and see, but that's going to be an interesting topic of discussion in a few weeks' time. Now though, it's time to hear predictions. And for me, we're gonna talk about how far they can go in the regular season, how far they can go in the postseason. And the regular season, I think they'll be pushing for the President's Trophy. I think that's what they really want to do here. I think for one, it's going to be really good for them just to push for something like that. And secondly, they need to set themselves up for success going into the playoffs. I don't think they want to face Tampa Bay again. Maybe they do. It'll be a good challenge for them. But I, I think it would be best to set themselves up for something a little bit easier, a little bit better for them in terms of home ice advantage, in terms of what they can do in the postseason. And if they have a good President's Trophy run, then they'll be a lot better suited for once the playoffs hit. In terms of the playoffs, though, I think there's only one scenario that can happen here. And that's similar to what Washington did a few years ago when they beat Pittsburgh. They went on to the win the Stanley Cup. And if the Leafs can get past the first round, I think anything is possible. I think it's worth saying that because again, you look at Washington and what they did, it's sort of the same thing that the Leafs have. Whereas the Pittsburgh Penguins to the Leafs are the first round. And if they can beat that, I think anything is possible. So there you have it. You have the President's Trophy, you have the Stanley Cup, both in the Leafs hands. I doubt they both happen. If one happens, the other one won't. I think it'd be smarter to say that the Leafs would go on more in the playoffs if they don't win the President's Trophy. And I think that's probably the best case scenario here. I can't see them winning both, but that's what I have to say right now is if they win the President's Trophy, it sets them up for success to get past the first round. But if they don't win the President's Trophy, 
there's no counting the Leafs out in the playoffs because this team this year, I'd say, might be better than last year's. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Put in your predictions where they'll end up at the end of the season in terms of the Atlantic division, in terms of the league, how many goals Austin Matthews is going to score, who might be the starter by the end of the season, and how far they'll go if they do get to the playoffs. Put all those things in the comment section down below. That though is where I'm going to end off today's video. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. If you really enjoyed it, subscribe. That helps a lot. And yeah, the Leafs season starts on Wednesday, which is if you're watching this today, it could be tomorrow. It could have been yesterday. But yeah, we'll talk about the Leafs throughout the season. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.